Hey, it's me, Cheryl, the roving naturalist. But you probably already knew that. How did you know that, though? Well, hopefully because you intentionally clicked on this video, but probably also because you recognize my face. So how does facial recognition work in our brains? And are any other animals capable of recognizing human faces? My friend Xander from Art Explains knows a lot about brains and faces, so I asked him to come and help me out. First, what is a face? Well, it's the front half of your head, of course. <laughs> In humans and most other animals that we say have faces, the face is the front part of the head where the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth are. So our face is where we use many of our sensory organs and also where we do a lot of our vocal and emotional communication. But Xander, how exactly do our brains process and recognize other people's faces? Well, first, the eyes send information to the back of the head, where the primary visual cortex is located. So yes, that technically means that you see with the back of your head. From there, some of the information follows what is known as the ventral visual pathway, which is the part of your visual processing network that helps you figure out what you're looking at. By the time it gets there, some of the basic information is already filled in, like the colors and where the edges are in the image. But after that, your brain has to compare the image that you just saw to images that you have previously seen, called representations. Representations are a fancy way of saying memories of what stuff looks like. Visual system researchers like myself argue endlessly about what those mental representations actually contain. Sometimes it is really easy to determine the identity of something if there's something really unique about it, like some specific feature with a specific color. Those are called categorical differences, but what's special about faces is the relationship between the features, such as the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, that help you to identify the person. Measurements like the distance between the eyes, or what the mouth looks like in the context of the nose and the chin. Some people call this holistic processing, but I prefer to call it coordinate processing for pedantic reasons. Probably the easiest way of demonstrating this different sort of processing, and the way I demonstrate it to kids, is with a Thatcherized image. Take a look at the upside down image of Cheryl on the screen. It seems normal, right? But watch what happens when it is slowly rotated. When the face is upside down, your brain is using the categorical system of recognition, and it reports that everything seems normal. The mouth looks like a mouth, and the eyes look like eyes. But when the image is flipped right side up, Suddenly, you are using coordinate processing, and your brain figures out that the relationship between the features is wrong. My own research looks at people with prosopagnosia, also known as face blindness, which occurs when someone has damage to part of their visual system. Typically, that damage is in the fusiform gyrus, which is part of that ventral visual pathway that I was talking about before. People with damage to this part of their brain have trouble with certain types of recognition tasks, especially recognizing people's faces. They can't, for example, recognize who I am by looking at my face. They can still complete categorical visual tasks, however. So if I always wore a funny, unique hat or grew out my facial hair in a distinctive way, they could figure out that it was me. What I do is I show people with prosopagnosia pictures of things to see if they can recognize them. Most recently, I used pictures of sheep and pictures of humans, and I was able to show some evidence that prosopagnosics are worse at recognizing both than the average person. But only if the task requires coordinate processing. But it's not just humans that can recognize other humans' faces. There are some pretty surprising examples of animals doing it, too. First, the obvious ones. Many primates, including chimpanzees, other apes, and monkeys, have been shown to be able to recognize human faces and tell them apart. This makes sense because these animals and their faces are very similar to us. It's probably also not a surprise to you that dogs can definitely recognize different people's faces, as well as being able to distinguish a person's emotions and follow a pointing finger or the direction of a person's gaze. But again, this makes sense because dogs have co-evolved with humans, and even on their own they're highly social animals, so being able to tell faces apart is an important skill for them. Some other highly social animals that we've domesticated, like many animals used in agricultural production, can also differentiate faces. It shouldn't be that surprising, though, because animals like cows and pigs need to be able to tell the difference between members of their herds, so they're also 
able to recognize the faces of their keepers or handlers. Ironically, not only can sheep be used to study whether or not humans can recognize faces, but sheep have also been tested for face recognition of their own. In one really fascinating study, scientists trained sheep to be able to recognize the faces of four celebrities using two-dimensional photographs. First, the sheep were trained to choose the faces instead of blank screens or pictures of objects. Then they were asked to choose the faces of the celebrities, which they were able to do with a frequency better than pure guessing. This was true even when they were shown different images and angles of the same faces. The sheep were also able to identify photos of their handlers without any prior training. But mammals aren't the only ones capable of recognizing human faces. You may have heard of or seen pictures from a series of experiments done with crows and other corvids, like ravens, jays, and magpies, using creepy masks with rather blank faces. These experiments are being conducted to test the bird's ability to recognize and remember human faces after positive or negative interactions. Crows can remember a face after an interaction that only lasts a few moments, but they can access the memory of that face for a long time and react accordingly when they see that person again. So why are corvids so good at identifying and remembering specific people? people. It probably has a lot to do with their high levels of intelligence, which have also been demonstrated through a variety of problem-solving tasks. So they're smart, but they're also good at learning quickly. This is important when you're a wild animal and could possibly be eaten at any moment. While most of the animals we've presented here have a lot of contact with humans, or otherwise have some sort of reason for being able to identify faces, there's one surprising example that shows that facial recognition might be possible for more of the animal kingdom than we thought. Archerfish, first of all are cool as heck because they spit water at bugs on branches overhead to knock them down and eat them. But these fish can also be trained, according to a study linked below, to identify human faces. This is possible even though the fish have much simpler brains and don't normally have contact with humans. The researchers hypothesized this may be because archerfish, and many other kinds of fish, need to be good at fine detail pattern discrimination, or being able to distinguish tiny differences between similar looking things. These skills would help the fish survive by allowing them to better distinguish prey, predators, and hiding places in their underwater world. Most animals that have been tested for human facial recognition are vertebrates, which we normally assume to be smarter animals. Animal intelligence is a huge topic that I will save for another time. But when we think about invertebrates, the smartest of these animals is usually identified to be the octopus. So when researchers did a similar positive versus negative interaction test with octopus as others had done with crows, the results were really interesting. The octopuses were much more likely to move to avoid the negative humans, and some octopuses even squirted water at the people they recognized as being irritating. When the irritating people were nearby, the octopuses were also much more likely to display a skin coloration and pattern that's normally indicative of their reaction to danger, so it seems the octopuses really could tell the people apart, even with water separating them. So it seems like many animals might be just as good at recognizing us as we are at identifying them. This is really interesting to me because it yet again illustrates that we're not nearly as separated from the natural world as many people might think. Hey Xander, thanks for your help with this video. It was really great to have a brain person along to explain the parts I don't understand. And if you guys would like to learn more about brains and stuff, you should head on over to Xander's channel where we made another video about one of my favorite topics, biophilia. You should also check out his other videos. I've been enjoying his series on ways your brain can break. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it. If you didn't like this video, please share it with someone who would. And if you'd like to support The Roving Naturalist, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon, then go check out our Patreon page. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. My new Dungeons & Dragons science show, Nature Check, is live on the first and third Saturdays of every month on Twitch, so come give us a watch. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.